Hello everyone and welcome back to the Super Heavy Applications program in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where I put Super Heavy to nefarious uses that was never meant to do in the real solar system with realism overhaul. And we have here what I've dubbed the big one, though actually it's not as big as I was intending. And that's mainly because the grid fins sort of get in the way. Uh, I would have liked six Super Heavies strapped to the side of a Super Heavy. But as you can see, even as it is, I have to rotate them so that the grid fins don't interfere with each other. And so we only have four. Though I'll try the version with six with it not being recoverable and really see how, how seriously we can max this out. So, and I'll even maybe do the cross feeding thing like asparagus staging and uh, stock Kerbal with the orange tanks. The traditional Kerbal rocket where you have a uh, core and then six orange tanks, the Jumbo 64 tanks, and then you do all the cross feeding between them in order to maximize the delta V that you get. But for now, that won't work with uh, recovering the boosters. For now, we want to still recover the boosters because this super heavy applications program was instigated by the fact that they actually got it back. So we'll go continue to go with that theme. And so we'll stick to four boosters and we'll still reserve the fuel in the boosters in order to recover them. I did put separatrons. Uh, because unlike Elon, I haven't been traumatized by solid rocket motors uh, somehow. But uh, yeah, so we have Cephatrons on the boosters. I mean, I understand, of course. Uh, yeah, you'd have to do it uh, pretty precisely so that they don't like flip out in a bad way. But that should be doable compared to some of the things that they actually have done. Anyway, and repacking fuel is just the same as filling fuel up one way or another. So that's not a big difference. The goal here is to get... Starship into orbit, uh, fully fueled. And um, well, we're sort of under fueled here. Let me just top it off. Uh, so fully fueled, and should we have cargo? Uh, do we have car We don't have cargo right now. We'll just settle for fully fueled, maybe. Let's just do that first. I'm not even sure we can do that. I don't know because, as you can see, the numbers over here, we've got not enough for orbit, uh, but. I'm pretty sure it's not telling me the truth because, first of all, it's telling me that the core is going to have a 25 minute burn time. It's not its normal burn time because we have a different engine arrangement. We've got three sea levels and nine vacuum engines on the core. Uh, but it's not going to be starting out at 4,900 tons. We'll be burning it at the surface. So, yeah, it's not telling me the truth. And we will have to see what we can do. Maybe we can underfuel Starship a bit. What is the capacity of just this bit without Starship? Uh, that is the question that we're going to ask. So without further ado, let me bring it out to the pad and we'll stay safe. I think KSC launch pad is safer and we'll see how it goes. I have not tried this. I have not tried up and up. Okay. Um, I think we need more launch clamps or something because like all the engines on the outside exploded. Okay, is it all gonna explode again? It's bouncing. So yeah, I haven't tried this at all and the prospect of lighting more than a hundred Raptor engines, well, it's just not gonna go wonderfully, let's face it. Uh, we'll see. Hopefully the fact that they're waterfall plumes will make things a little bit better. Okay, well, here goes nothing. SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. It has a thrust to weight ratio of 1.5. It's just the lag, the physics lag. Better turn aggressively too. So the core will last longer because there are fewer engines on it. There's only 12 engines. I don't know if that's enough or whether we need to squeeze some more sea levels on. There's no cross feeding from the boosters into the core. Oddly, I think it's not as loud as just a regular Super Heavy. 
like the noise is interfering with itself. Either that or it's already caused me to have hearing loss. And so it doesn't sound as loud, but that's because my ears have been damaged. I don't know. For reference, I have an i5-12600K with 64 gigabytes of RAM and an RTX 4070. So, it's just hard for Kerbal to run a rocket like this. It's, it's really not my hardware. Oh, um, you know, something weird has happened with the... With the fuel, it looks like the core vacuum engines didn't get any fuel. Oh, they have to be mounted on nodes. Uh, yeah, okay. I don't know. Okay, so that's why I was reading 27 minutes before. All right, well, this is gonna take too long if we don't revert now. So the vacuum engines on the core are not getting fuel because apparently fuel only goes through the nodes on this model. I don't know why. It seems like it, it's okay with enable crossfeed. Okay, and that makes a lot more sense now. That doesn't leave us with enough delta V. Let's see what the payload capacity really is then. Um, let's just make uh, Starship into a payload, lock its fuels, and assume that that number is correct. So how heavy can we make it? I wasn't really expecting it to be able to do it fully, but I'm hoping that we can at least get it half full to orbit. So this 20,000 ton monster is still only capable of launching a half-fueled Starship, so you'd have to launch two of them in order to fully fuel Starship in orbit. But all right, anyway, let's just test that that works. We're still not perfect on the delta v but i think that'll be enough delta v it's a little bit complicated because we're reserving fuel in the four boosters a remarkable lack of resources up there it's practically not realism overhaul there's so few it's almost stock okay sas on throttles up ignition and launch Make sure they're all... The reason I didn't see it before was because the vacuum ones were at the top. I had to scroll through like a hundred engines to get to them. Okay, I think everything's on now. So I'm leaning towards this not being a good idea. <laughs> I guess that was sort of obvious. But what about the six booster non reusable one? <laughs> that seems horrible, doesn't it? Well, through the speed of sound here. Ah, it's so choppy. I do have volumetric clouds, so. Well, that's not the cause of the choppiness, but it's probably not helping. Okay, throttling down, I presume that would be a good idea. But actually, we should probably let the boosters go. I think there was some wiggling at the start, though. So, the clock started early. Alright, let's just see if they can go off safely. Okay, let me turn to one of them. I just wanted to see how much Delta V they had. Oh, that's too much actually. It shouldn't be more than double the surface velocity, that's for sure. Alright, so how much Delta V do we have? It's not enough. I don't think we need more engines on this stage. I think that's got a decent thrust weight ratio at this point. 
we can't keep the boosters for too much longer. Maybe three, four hundred meters per second. I don't think too much more than that. And that's not going to make up the difference. So my verdict on this particular configuration is it's not worth the trouble, really. I mean, first of all, there's the lag. But second of all, it can't even get a half full starship into orbit. So it's audacious, but it's sort of junk. Well, the numbers don't lie. There's no way this is going to get to orbit. Uh, let me just try not reusing the boosters and see how far we get. Just, just use them up. All right, here we lag again. SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. Okay, going through max Q with as much lag as possible. The clock is definitely not right. We I left it wiggling on the pad for a little while. Okay, keeping the boosters this time. I should have taken off the grid fins. And probably we should have just done the six booster version, but just putting the boosters on takes takes a bit of effort. The VAB doesn't like this whole business either. Up oh, we're rather high. Okay, booster set and throttle up. Ah, uh, it's slow. Alright, now can we get to orbit? Barely, barely. Uh, maybe not enough. We might need Starship to finish orbit for us. Okay, well, the periapsis is positive, but yeah, it didn't get all the way. So, um, well, let's skip the hot staging stuff, actually. No, it doesn't really matter, but... Oh, right, stuff is locked. Okay, well, that's orbit. So, how heavy are we? So, that monstrosity gets 750 tons to orbit. Uh, or thereabouts. We could have just put 750 tons, I think it would have gotten to orbit, especially with a good trajectory. Uh, but, well, I mean, 20,000 tons in the pad to do that. I think we can do better. Uh, yeah, so Super Heavy being used like that, probably not a good idea. Probably not a good idea. I know there's been a lot of uh, ideas posted in the comments to the Super Heavy Applications Program videos. This one I didn't know how it would shake up, but some of them I look at them and go like, yeah, that's, that's not really going to be that interesting, so you'll have to forgive me. But if I do see one that is interesting, I'll try it out uh, and I'll mention the person who came up with it. But this one, this one is just one of those normal ones where you just strap on super heavy boosters onto super heavy and see how much extra you get, right? Well, the extra you get, you, you get 750 tons of payload capacity, basically. So, yeah, pretty simple one, but it needed to be done. And let's face it, you need a supercomputer to do it. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it took a lot longer than I thought it would because of the lag. So... Anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.